Okay, today's show is on self-reflection and self-evaluation. Something many people never do, but once you do it, you have a huge weight lifted off your shoulders. We'll be focusing on accountability and then get you a clear path and purpose. And we'll be using Encompass Purpose again, Encompass Purpose Study Guide. You can get them if you haven't through Barnes & Noble or Amazon or directly from us. If nothing else, grab a piece of paper and a pen and we'll get started here. We'll be going through the following topics that are displayed here on the screen. And uh, we'll try to get you uh, as much information as possible, but if you have additional questions, feel free to get a hold of us at encompasspurpose at gmail.com. And what we'll do is uh, read your questions, get back to you, and possibly even use uh, questions on the air to help other people. Now we're of course available for coaching um, if you want to take it further and take some more steps to get yourself going in the right direction. If you're having some stumbling blocks, we're always here. Just simply email or call. The biggest part of self-evaluation and reflection, at first it's real substantial because most of us never do it. I know that I've done it a long time ago, but we uh, once you get through that, you can do it daily, and I do it multiple times a day, try to reflect on quite a bit that's going on. At first, it's a daunting task, but if you truly do it and do it 100%, it'll be a hard thing to do, but one of the best things you've ever done for your life. Now, Galatians 6, 4 through 5 says, Each one of us should test his own actions. Then he can take pride in himself without comparing himself to somebody else. For each should carry his own load. When you do your very best and you feel good about the results, there's no need to compare yourself to others. People make comparisons for many reasons. Some point out others' flaws. They uh, may do it just to make themselves feel better about themselves. But when you're tempted to do that, compare and look at Jesus Christ. His example will inspire you. It'll comfort you. And when you fall short of your expectations, look back to Jesus Christ again. And he's not expecting you to be perfect. He's just expecting you to act and try and carry out his plan. Self-evaluation has many parts and will be reoccurring through this whole series. And you should really reflect on this because as you grow, your self-reflection will change. And you'll be able to get more out of it, maybe even change from what you did the first time to what you're doing now. So you have to ask yourself to start out, what do I do well? What could I do better? What could I change? Where am I looking to go? They're really important questions along with what have I approved upon? What are my time wasters and busy work? What strengthened me spiritually? What brought me closer to my dreams and visions and goals? What aligned me to God and God's purpose? And if you don't know that, you really have to self-reflect and get aligned with God's purpose. What will help me align? What brought me clarity? And what will further my path for my future? This is such a powerful tool for growth. And if you allow it to, and add and subtract from them questions, you know, just depending on where your life is right now, It'll really get you started in the self-reflection process. We'll keep going here with some more questions. We'll also have Jamie on the show. Um, that way you can kind of see the process take effect. Unfortunately for Jamie, he's uh, kind of being put on the spot, but it's a lot smoother process when we do the coaching as far as we don't push so much at you right away. But it'll help you seeing Jamie go through this, and that's why we're doing the whole interview for you. 
Now you can ask yourself, what are some of your major arguments, some of your major hurts, some of your major setbacks? Where have you been taken advantage of in your life? That's all things you have to think about. Now, if you think the person or the business or um, the relationship, organization, whatever it is, if you think they're just mean or evil, take them out of the equation so you just have the situation. Don't justify your actions by saying they're a terrible person. Think about the situation and then just focus on that situation. And then you can ask yourself, how could it have been different? How did I learn from it? What wisdom did I gain from it? What makes me better out of the, what happened? Now, what arguments, major setbacks, um, taking advantage of people have you done in the past? That's something a lot of us don't want to think about, but we've all done it. And then you have to ask yourself what baggage you carry because of both, what I've mentioned in both things. How much time do you waste on reoccurring thoughts of both? And uh, if you deal with all this in your self-reflection, you can, the steps will be taken through forgiveness and asking for forgiveness that you'll be able to let it all go and get yourself out of that spin mode again and moving in the right direction. Corinthians 13, three through seven says, if I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames, but have not loved, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy. It does not boast. It's not proud. It's not rude. It's not self-seeking. It's not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not rejoice in evil, but rejoices in the truth. It always protects, it always trusts, it always hopes, it always perseveres. Our society confuses love and lust. God's kind of love is directed outwards towards others, not inwards towards yourself. It's utterly unselfish. This kind of love goes against our natural inclinations. It's possible to practice this love only when God helps you set aside your own desires and your own instincts so you can give love while expecting nothing in return. Thus, the more we become like Christ, the more we can show others love. Now, once you do this, you can take responsibility and accountability for yourself. And you can totally change your life. It doesn't matter what your parents did. It doesn't matter what that former company or your company did. It doesn't matter what that past relationship did or didn't do. You have control of your life. Nobody can make you feel any way you don't want to feel. If you feel a certain way, it's because you've allowed yourself to feel that way. Um, we'll choose uh, some things to look at for the future here. Are you going to do as you have in the past and choose anger, sadness, and hurt? Or do you want to do some things and learn, take the wisdom possible out of it and move on? Everybody gets hurt. It's okay, but you can learn from it and pull out the wisdom from it and move on. Go to uh, how will this experience make me better? What happiness, fulfillment, purpose, um, direction, positive improvements. There's so many ways to look at it without being negative and just help you grow, learn, and move on rather than just festering in the sadness and anger and that doesn't get you anywhere. The people you're angry at don't even most of the time know you're angry. So if you can take, uh, learn from the experience, take the positive improvements out of it, and then just grow from there. You have to ask yourself what you can do. Many people go through life without doing self-reflection. And if you take the excess of responsibility and the accountability, God gave you control and choice. It's awesome. And you can be happy rather than be angry, sad, depressed, stuck in the same spot. You can always be moving forward. You can always be focused. You can always be accountable. What action steps are you willing to take? That's the biggest thing. 
You can talk about it all you want, but until you're willing to take them action steps to improve your life, nothing's really going to happen. You can talk about improving at the beginning of the year. A lot of people do that, but it takes more than talk. It does take action. And you can do a lot of things in your life, but it does take action. Matthew 7, 1 through 5 says, Do not judge, or you will be judged. For the same way you judge others, you will be judged, and with the measure you use, it will be measured. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, take the speck out of your own eye, when all the time there's a plank in your eye? You're a hypocrite. First take the plank out of your own eye, then you'll see clearly and remove the speck from your brother's eye. Jesus tells us to examine our motives and conduct instead of judging others. Don't fall in faults that are easy to magnify in others while excusing our own. If you're ready to criticize someone, see if you deserve the same criticism. Now judge yourself first and lovingly forgive and help your neighbor. Don't tear down others to make yourself feel better. We need discernment rather than negativity. Do you find it easy to magnify others faults while excusing your own? A lot of us do that. It's really important to think about that. I'm going to repeat that again. Do you find it easy to magnify others faults while excusing your own? What are your perspectives and biases? Do you think only through your perceptions or are you open to see others perspectives and perceptions? That's a really important thing, a big stumbling block people have. If you start seeing things through other people's eyes and the way they think about it, or else at least if you don't at first, take a step back at some point, self-reflect and think, what was that person? Where were they coming from? It'll be a huge help in your life. Set in motion actions you need to do to improve your life. Discipline yourself for what you want to do and what you want to be. Stop blaming, making excuses, and playing the victim role. When you can take charge of your life, you're in charge, you're in charge of your feelings, you're in charge of your life, you're in charge of where it's at now and where you want to go, but you got to do it now. Take action. Work through your misalignments. From bad values to good values. Change it from bad behaviors to good behaviors. What are your goals? What's your calling? And that's a big one. You might not be able to answer quite yet, but please come back to that throughout the series and the books. And then feel free to reach out if you need help with that one. There's a lot of things you usually have to do in your life to find out exactly that answer. It's, uh, if uh, something's not getting you where you want to go, why are you doing it? Why are you wasting your time doing it if it's not getting you where you want to be? Let the resentment and anger and past in general go. They're only hurting you. It'll take up your mind instead of letting you move forward. Focus on what you want, your dreams, your goals, your purpose. How can you take the higher ground and do God's purpose and align with it? Really give deep thought to many situations in your life. Your hardships, your uh, things beyond your control that set you back. But it doesn't mean you have to stay there. You can uh, stop making excuses, stop kicking the can, start kicking butt. Get going on your life. Haggai 1 through 5 says, Now this is the Lord Almighty. Give careful thoughts to your ways. You've planted much, but you've harvested little. You eat, but you never have enough. You drink, but you never have your fill. You put on your clothes, but you're not warm. You earn wages only to put them in a purse with holes in it. 
This is the Lord Almighty saying, give careful thought to your ways. God asks the people, how can they live in luxury while his house is living in ruins? The heart of people work for themselves and ignored God in their spiritual lives, the harder it became for them. If we put God first, he'll provide for our deepest needs. If we put him in any other places, our efforts will really be futile. Caring for only our needs and ignoring our relationship to God will lead to ruins. And so you always have to put God first. If you don't, and trust me, in the past I've tried. I've built up big things, but you always run into stumbling blocks and problems. You always have to put God first. What are your priorities? What's your lifestyle? How do you treat people? And by that I mean all people. Reflect on what you've twisted and suppressed and manipulated and think about it. Be honest with yourself because until you do, you're stuck where you're at. And now take all them things and list them. And if you're 30 years old and you list 10 things, you're probably not doing this right. You, uh, there should be a lot of things you've done wrong, people have done wrong to you, and you have to get your path in the right place in order to move forward. And then we won't have to think about the past anymore. Now, if you did do this, I want to congratulate you because you've done something many never do in their life. You've taken big steps forward and improving your life. And now we can begin to fix it. The heaviness and the baggage, let everything go and be focused and aligned. Ask yourself, how can I align myself for where I want to go and what I want to be? What am I doing that's not aligned with what I want to be? What will I stop doing to improve myself? What's my busy work? What are my time wasters? How will I stop them? What are the areas I'll increase responsibility and accountability in my life? And what areas will I do daily just to improve myself? One thing you have to ask yourself is what will I align my walk with God? How can I align my walk with God? How can I f make my life more fulfilled? How can I be more content? How can I be happier and more joyful? How can I live cl life closer to God? What is it I truly want? Now, I went through these very quickly, so rewatch it or go through the study guide and you'll see a lot there is a lot to this, a lot, lot longer than what we did today. But uh, the big question, the biggest question of the whole show, who am I? And by that, I don't mean a doctor, mom, husband, carpenter, pastor, um, lawyer. That's an occupation or a role in your life. You have to ask yourself, who are you? Once you do that, Nobody can take away anything from you. Once you know who you are, it doesn't matter your house, your car, your job. It matters who you are. And once you truly find that, it doesn't matter what anybody says, what anybody thinks. That's who you are. And they can't take that away from you. Now feel free to contact us with questions. Um, also, I really encourage you to get the study guide because it's going to help a lot with this. Feel free to reach out on email. If you need some coaching, feel free to reach out again on email or call. Um, and then also we'll be in Springfield at Barnes & Noble on January 18th. Hope some of you come out and meet me there in person. And we'll be doing this in a two-part series. Because uh, I would like to explore the questions a little better and kind of give you a first-hand example with Jamie. So we'll, uh, we'll do what we did here, um, but then we'll be going on with Jamie to do quite a bit more interviewing. So it'll take up two shows. So there'll be a part two to this. So you can kind of see the process with Jamie 
And I'm probably going to get a little tougher on Jamie than I would a normal client just because me and Jamie do know each other a little bit. And also for you, because we're short on time, to show the process a little bit, usually this would be a lot longer process, but we're gonna try to do that in just two shows. So we got Jamie here today. He's gonna be answering some of the questions on self-reflection. Um, did you get a chance to read through everything then and answer some of the questions? I did. I, I read uh, read a little bit and answered and answered a little bit. Okay. The questions on here. Now, on the self-reflection part of it, what do you think you do well right now? Uh, communicate with people. I, I think I, I'm good at that. I mean, what do you feel you could do better? A bunch. Uh -huh. <laughs> There, there's a whole bunch, actually, Brad. Uh, I can be a better Christian, you know. Honestly, uh, I live in the Word a lot, a lot, a lot better than what I do, you know. Uh, there's a lot. I mean, so that'd be something you'd want to change in. You bet. Yeah. So, what areas are you not looking to go into, you know, that's not going to help you with what you want to do? Backwards. I don't want to go backwards, you know what I mean? Or, or stay stuck. I, I'd have to move forward in order, you know, to uh, to better myself, to to better my, my Christian walk, so to speak, I guess, you know. Uh, <laughs> what would you say... Uh, are some of your everybody has them but time wasters or busy things that keep you from doing productive things mercy there's there's a ton you know uh, and, and it's not even good reasons to you know and I, I mean I don't don't know how to quite just come around and say there's a bunch uh, and they're not they're not even good reasons I don't think yeah and that's we'll get to that a little bit too on how to become more productive but there is a it's funny how people say they they can't get to their goals but then they'll spend five hours on facebook you oh know, man and don't have there, time. there's yeah there's one or, or just watching tv you know uh movies that just movies yeah you know that, that's occupying your time as something that you could actually be studying and work, working on work, working on your your encompass purpose you know <laughs> So what uh, what do you plan for 2020 that's going to help you get closer to your visions and your goals and your path? And uh, getting back in church, you know, I, and when I say getting back, I mean fully getting back into church, not just going a Sunday here and maybe a Sunday there, you know. Um, definitely doing, doing, doing these studies right here. I mean, it's good. It's, good. it's got a lot of good stuff in it. So, and then that'll uh, probably help further your path and your clarity too. You know, oh yeah, I think so. I, I, I think so, 100%. So. Sorry for interrupting you. Oh no, no, that's fine. <laughs> so, what made your arguments and uh, misunderstandings and things like that have you done that you're willing to get past now? Um, in the past, say with other people and things like that. So. I, th I think I need, I need to, um, Especially like in an argument, I'm not real good, and I just I I, I jump right in hot-headed, and it's, I should take the time to to actually sit and listen, listen better, you know, and and take that time. Uh, uh, there's a few. I mean, you know, <laughs> well, what uh. What are some of the things you can gain out of some of your, I guess, big disappointments in life or, you know, Game. maybe poor experiences? You know, what is some of the wisdom you've pulled out of it? Uh, well, the company I keep, for one, you know, uh, I, I've slowly started changing, changing those things because you can't, in order to move forward, you can't keep stuck. In the same place that keeps you back yeah is that yeah yeah okay um, and uh, to be honest it's 
heck you you brought me where i where i'm sitting here right now with you or i wouldn't be here you know um and and i have read on on this book and i like it uh i i've, I've been married for 26 years um and i married a preacher's daughter you know uh i went to church every sunday i was a deacon my bad thing was what happened to me, you know. Uh, like I said, I was I was a uh, I was the uh, president of the Christian Athletic Rocktown Association here um, for a few years. I did well, you know. I had my own business and things like that, and lost my company and went to work at Fort Leonard Wood, and then went just sunk from there. Yeah. <laughs> until I got here, I mean, and here's where. I need to be if I'm going to move forward because it it makes it makes sense to me. I mean, I, I feel that. Yeah. So, do you think uh, you carry like baggage from some of the past? The oh yeah. And lots of you it. Think about it a lot. Oh yeah, it eats me up. The choices I've made, you know, uh, things I've done. Um. Things I can't get back, you know. Like, and if I if I try to keep living like that, I'm not going to go forward. I'm not going to move forward, you know. I'm not just going to be stuck. And part of the next uh, episode, we'll be going over uh, how to ask for forgiveness and forgiveness. And do you think after you go through that, you'll be able to kind of take that off your mind and? quit thinking about it so much it's it's possible you know I, it's very highly possible because I, I know once once those things are are, are, are gone through and uh, helped out or some sort uh, then it's it's maybe not forgot about but just you know filed yeah moved so, on yeah uh, what better you want to yes. think about so yeah so. yeah positive things better things do you find it easy to uh, magnify mistakes in others by wanting them to excuse your mistakes? Sometimes, actually. I mean, I'd lie if I said I didn't. Yeah, I think <laughs> everybody does somewhat. Yeah. So, but, I, hey, but I, I have been working on that, though. I really have. Uh, uh, like I said, you know, I've I've read through. I've read through so far. Here, you know, on, on Encompass Purpose, and there, there's there's a lot of good things in there. So, and, and there's a lot of good things that'll help me, for sure. <laughs> if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. And then we'll be doing the part two of this series, along with, uh, right after that, another big step, which will really help actually with this step in forgiving and asking for forgiveness. Thank you and have a great day.